Trevor, I'm going to jump to you with Hack. Clemson escapes. Hard to say they escaped. They just outlasted Florida State, I think, is a more fair assessment. 34-28. DJU got down there and got rolling a little bit, um, enough to stave off of another catastrophe. Clemson remains undefeated at the end of the day. That's all that matters. But do you still have that national top four faith in them? That they are they one of the four best programs? If you just take a look at it, are they one of the four best programs right now, Clemson Tigers? It's tough. It's tough to answer that question, George. And here's why: I really do think Clemson is out on an island, and it's of no fault to their own. But I think they play in an inferior conference. I think yeah. that you've got some of the better teams um, in the Big Ten and in the SEC right now that are going up and, and playing in big-time games and going up against incredible talent. And, and Clemson's just out there on the, on the East Coast, and they're winning football games, but they're not mauling people like maybe some of the years we've seen in the past. They're not having to face any big-time talent. So it's tough to say, right? Like they, we talked about it earlier in the show – being there before goes a long way. If, if Clemson goes unscathed and finds themselves in the playoff based on history and based on the logo, which I'd love to have that discussion as well, right? If, if they go unscathed, are they in over some of these other big dogs that we've talked about? But if they go unscathed and get in, because they've been there, does it matter that they've played inferior talent or will they rise to the occasion? I, I just don't know. I think DJ's playing pretty good ball. Um, he had a good day today. I think that they've got a good culture going there, but they're certainly beatable. My gut tells me if you put Clemson up against Alabama, if you put Clemson up against Ohio State or Michigan or Georgia today, my gut tells me they go down. Historically and history mm. tells me that's probably a, a dumb move, but my gut tells me they go down today. What's the biggest difference they lack from the teams of the past of Clemson that you'd say, you know, they just look like superhero teams. I really, I really think it's that they're in an inferior conference and they're not mauling people the way I would like to see them maul, but they're winning football games, right? It's just, right. that's why it's tough for me to answer. Hack, what are your thoughts, dude? Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of agree with you. I don't think it's the Clemson of old in the ACC. Um, you know, the the Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence era. Like, I mean, even going back to Taj Boyd. I mean, they they were they were they were mauling the ACC pretty much up and down. I don't think they're built that way right now. Um, obviously, last year I think kind of kind of sucked. I think they have certain pieces. I think their front seven is very very good. I, I, I do think DJ has turned it around. I just don't think DJ has as strong of a supporting cast as some of those uh, aforementioned quarterbacks have had yeah, that's um, in terms of just being proven consistent, you know, running back stable with receivers. And I mean, even tight end, even the tight end uh, spot. I don't, I don't think he does uh, traditionally speaking. Now, are they bad players? Absolutely not. They're good football players, but you know, I just think it's different. And I think when you when you look at this Clemson team for what they've for what they've done and what they're doing, it's going to be really hard if they continue to run it in the ACC and they're undefeated. And it's like, oh, well, you know, they had a rough but they had a little bit of a rough patch last year. It's almost like you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. But to Trevor's point, I think that there's two conferences that if you have two teams in the same division of those conferences, Everything plays out the way it should be. One beats the other one, and then the other one beats the the team that they just beat in the SEC championship game. And then you mm -hmm. go over to the and in, into the Big Ten East, and you have Michigan and Ohio State. They beat up on each other, and then the whoever gets in the Big Ten championship game wins that easily. I would make the argument, as I did last year, that you should have a showdown of the uh, Big Ten East and the SEC, whichever West. side of that conference. Well, yes. no, 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 well, no, not yeah, the West. Right. Not the you're West. Right. It's the SEC now, East now. East, yeah. It's the SEC yeah. East now That's with the point. Tennessee and point. Georgia showdown. And Kentucky. That's what I would say. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kentucky. But, you know, hey, Kentucky's kind of played their way out of it as a play. I think they can still play Dark Horse and, and, and spoiler, without a doubt. It's a really good football team. But I think if as long as as long as long Tennessee can survive the Kentucky challenge and Georgia can survive it, 
I think that'd be an interesting, much more interesting conversation than Georgia or than, than Clemson at this point in time right now. We're dropping our merch. We got to start calling Underwood Daddy Brad. But I'm a big yeah. odd guy. Breaking news. The Field of 68 has an online store, and it's your one-stop shop for the latest and greatest merch in college basketball and college football. You can find shirts to support your favorite team, make fun of your rival team, or boast Field of 68 catchphrases like Daddy Brad, Cussing and Discussing, and the Star Heels. Go to www.fieldof68.shop today and enter promo code TOUCHDOWN for 20% off at checkout. 